Hi guys. guys! Welcome back. This is video 4 of Transition Battles. Finally, the last lesson of our Transition Battles. Now, we're going to recap, right? What actually is colour? Mm. Why is this red and why is this blue? I have never understood this, but I hope after our lesson together, we can now finally understand. Mm. So, Mr. Long, can you come, can you help me shed some light? Get it? Shed some colour? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much for your pun. <laughs> okay, so it's such a deep question, right? What really is colour? So, yes. so philosophical. Mm. So, in the context of science, right, uh, we say that, let's say if you're looking at a red object, let's say you shine white light onto it and you see it as a red, red object, right? Okay. Uh, what happens is that red light is actually being reflected off the object and into our eyes. That's why we see it as red colour. Right. So, okay. uh, Mr. Tim, what happens if um, the object, uh, if, you, if you absorb all the light, okay. what's going to happen? But if I absorb all the light, mm. then it'll be black. Everything will be black. I can't okay. see. So, what happens if you decide not to absorb any light at all? If I don't absorb anything, then it'll be white. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, that's how it okay, works. It makes sense. Okay. Mm. So, the okay. whole idea over here okay. is um, the object will uh, reflect a certain light, okay, but it's going to absorb all the other uh, lights that you see over there, all the other colors that you see over there. Ah. And that's how it works. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. So, um, let's take a look at uh, the this thing called the color wheel. So, we must mm. first understand that for different colors, right, um, these colors are all appearing on this thing called the electromagnetic spectrum, uh -huh. right? And uh, they will actually correspond to a certain wavelength, right? Mm -hmm. So, different wavelength will give me different colors, right? And uh, in this case over here, uh, you do not really have to memorize the numbers, but you need to roughly know that different colors correspond to different wavelength, mm. okay? So, um, let's take a look at a particular example, Fe3 plus solution. Sure. So, Fe3 plus, uh, Mr. Tim, what colour is that in the first place? So I recall from all levels, Fe3 plus is yellow. Yes, yeah. yellow, mm. yes. So if I take a look at this absorbs, absorption uh, spectrum, uh, Mr. Tim, can you run us through what is happening here? Well, you can see that at the 420 wavelength, right? At the 420 wavelength, my Fe3 plus absorbs so much of this wavelength. Mm. So if I go back to my colour wheel, if I absorb a lot of 420 nanometers of this wavelength, let me check, 420, ah, 420 is here, right? So Mr. Long, um, but didn't we just say that Fe3 plus is yellow? That's right. I absorb, aren't I absorbing violet? Mm -hmm. You absorb violet, but you must understand that you are actually reflecting all the colours oh, other than violet. Okay. okay, so that is why if I look at the graph itself, yes, right, yes. for the other colours, which uh -huh. corresponds to a wavelength that is not 420, right. uh, you realise that absorbance is very low, mm. which means that all mm. these other colours, they reflect, and the combination of all these colours itself is going to give me the yellow colour. Right. Okay, so that is the whole idea of uh, the absorption theory, mm. uh, the absorption uh, uh, spectrum over here, right? Yeah, well, mm. but Mr. Long, quite complicated, right? So, is it, so you're telling me if I absorb violet, mm. I reflect everything else, Yes. and this gives me yellow. Oh, yes. Whoa, can, can, you, can you give me a shortcut? Oh yes, your oh mind blows, God. right? Yes. Looks like your, your mind's going to uh, explode. So yes. the whole idea over here is we use, use this thing called the colours uh, the color wheel uh -huh. to help me to memorise this a little bit better. Okay. Right? So what we do is we look at the colours of a rainbow, right. we go in either a clockwise or anti-clockwise manner mm -hmm. and uh, obviously you divide it into six parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it turns out if you want to get the colour very quickly, the colour uh, that you observe right, will always be opposite to the colour that you have uh, ah, absorbed. So since you told me that you absorb the violet colour, yes. uh, it means that if I jump opposite to the other side, uh, you're going to see yellow which means that the, the, the object is going to appear as yellow. So I think there's a small error on the notes, right? Mr. Mm. Tim, can you, could you help us correct that? Yeah, Fe3 plus should not be blue, right? <coughs> and did changes in class, Fe3 plus should mm. appear yellow, like bananas. <laughs> the right ones. <laughs> yes, the right ones. So knowing how the colours form is just only one part of the equation, mm. right? So we're going to use this idea to really now explain how come uh, when we talk about transition metal ions or their compounds, they are often coloured. So okay. we can now finally understand. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to break up my discussion into two major parts. The first of which is called DD splitting. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is called DD transitioning. Okay, mm. so let's take a look at DD splitting first. Okay. Now, uh, we all understood that our transition metals have, uh, or their ions, right? Uh, they have D orbitals that are partially filled. Okay, yep. so what's going to happen itself is uh, this discussion is going to be only for octahedral complex. Okay. So we're going to imagine our ligands coming in uh, in an octahedral manner in the sense that they're coming in along the x, y, and z axis. Okay. Now, as they approach the central metal ion, right, mm -hmm. uh, they are going to experience repulsion. The oh. reason is because, uh, why, Mr. Tim? Well, because they're ligands, right, mm. they have lone pair of electrons. So they're kind of electron rich, right, high electron density. Mm. And when it approaches your orbitals, you realise that because it's approaching on the x, y, z axis, you will notice that some d orbitals, they're actually lying on the x, y, z axis as well. Mm -hmm. Now, if you guys forgot, let me just recap with you. If you look at your dz square or your dx square minus y square, you will notice that, and this is what I always tell my students in class, you see these two here? The two here means the two lobes is on the z axis. So you can see dx square, dy square. 
right? The two lobes are on the x-axis and the y-axis respectively. So you realize that for the d and dz square and the x square minus y square, when your ligands actually approach, like we said, it approaches along the x, y, z axis. Mm -hmm. So it will kind of like kind of collide, right, with the orbitals here. And when my ligands actually collide with these orbitals, this results in electronic repulsion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, but Mr. Long, if you look at the x, y, x, z, and y, z, right, mm -hmm. if the orbitals are not lying on the axis, will there still be repulsion? Uh, yes, there will be because oh. as long as there's electrons inside your ions, um, definitely there's going to be repulsion, right? Ah, but I, ex okay. I, I will expect that because um, all these orbitals, they are in between the axes. Yes, there's repulsion, but I don't think it is as much as it will be for the dz square and dx square minus y square. I see. So the dz square, x square minus y square, those mm. orbitals will be repelled to a greater extent. So mm -hmm. the energy for these orbitals will be higher, right? Mm -hmm. Relative to the rest, right? Okay, so let's take a look at the energy level diagram let's then. Let's go, let's right? go. So originally at the start, if you do not have any ligands itself, they mm -hmm. are all degenerate, they mm -hmm. all have the same energy level at the start. Yes. But the moment you start to see ligands approaching them, uh, the two sets of orbitals, they are going to split into two different energy levels. Mm -hmm. And as so you can take a look at the diagram, the dz square and the dx square minus y square, they are at a slightly higher energy level. Perfect. So in this case, we are going to create a small energy gap in between them. This is what we call your delta E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this is the first part of the discussion on DD splitting. Okay, mm. the D orbitals have split into two sets of energy levels. Uh, Mr. Tim, can you run us through DD transitioning then? Yes, they are very different concepts, okay? Do not be confused. Now, a DD transition is this. Now, my orbitals have already split. Now, assuming we're going to take the example of Fe3+, let's assume I have an electron mm -hmm. in my DXY orbital, okay? There's an electron there. Now, when I excite, that means when I shine enough light, okay, and this electron will absorb energy based on your small energy gap here. Yes, okay, and your energy is related to the wavelengths that we saw just now. So assuming I shine a bit of light, this electron now excites, absorb this energy, and I excite and I go up. This is DD transitioning, okay? So if I summarize for you, you can look at this here. When a 3D electron from a lower energy orbital, so we used XY, right, is promoted to a higher energy orbital, it absorbs that energy, delta E. So you can see this beautifully put. This electron here absorbs this delta E and it transits to a higher energy mm -hmm. level. This is DD transitioning, okay? So we're going to take a look at how the energy gap is actually related to my colour itself. Okay. okay, so we have this formula from physics, right? Mm. Uh, e is actually going to be inversely proportional to my wavelength, which is lambda itself, ah, okay? So okay. this means that um, when your electron absorbs a particular energy, which mm -hmm. corresponds to delta E, it is uh, similarly saying that you're absorbing a certain wavelength, ah. okay? And this wavelength happens to be inside the uh, visible range of the electromagnetic spectrum, mm -hmm. which means that it is always going to correspond to a colour. Right. And this is exactly what we're talking about if you have a substance um, uh, that is coloured, it is going to absorb a certain colour of a certain wavelength. So in the context of Fe3+, you are actually absorbing the, the violet wavelength. Mm. So Mr. Tim, can you continue for me? What's going to happen from there? Well, sure. So like we said, like what Mr. Long said, I'm going to absorb a wavelength of 420 newton nanometers, excuse me, all right? So the 420 nanometers correspond to the purple section, okay? Mm -hmm. So in other words, if I absorb the 420 nanometer wavelength, that means I'm absorbing an energy inversely proportional to that, okay? In this case, I'm absorbing violet. And remember what we said, the colour that we absorb, mm -hmm. complement to that, is the colour that we observe. So if I absorb in the violet spectrum, in the violet visible light, that means the colour that I actually see is yellow. That's right. And that's it. Hmm. Okay, so Mr. Long, this whole idea of DD orbital splitting, DD transitioning, and then Oh, colours. Can, can, you get, can you consolidate everything for me? So for three marks in exam, yeah. they usually have to ask why is it coloured, right? Yeah. So the first mark always goes to DD uh, splitting. Okay. So you have to tell me something about uh, the, 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 uh, the ligands approaching and therefore you are going to split uh, the 3D orbitals into two different energy levels that creates a energy gap for you. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the first mark. Uh, the second mark is going to be talking about DD transitioning. Uh, for DD transitioning, you must tell me that when white light is shine, uh, uh -huh. your electrons from a lower energy level is going to absorb it and mm -hmm. you are going to get promoted to a high energy level and this energy that absorbed, known as the delta E, will always correspond to a certain wavelength. Okay? And for the final mark, you tell me that the wavelength that you absorb uh, is not the colour that you're going to see, you're going to reflect it, so therefore the colour complementary to the, to the wavelength that you absorb will be the colour that's going to be observed. Perfect. Beautiful, easy three marks. Okay, so um, let's take a look at a very typical exam question. Okay. Now, we normally see that Cu2+, uh, what colour is it? Nah? 
blue, right? Okay, but unfortunately for CU Plus, you're going to see this usually as colorless. Wow. So they love to ask you why that is so. Okay. Can you run me through it, Mr. Tim? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So again, CU2 Plus and CU Plus, right? We're going to assume that they're octahedral complexes, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, you can see in the question, they both can undergo d orbital splitting, mm -hmm. right? So you can see here, I have already split it for you, right? Now, for CU2 Plus, you would see that the configuration is 3D9. Now, if it's 9, Mr. Long, will there be an unpaired electron? Uh, from, nine. from 10 electrons, yes, there will be, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. So because it's 3D9, there mm -hmm. will be an unpaired electron. So you can see here, there is one unpaired electron here. Mm -hmm. So when I shine light, okay, when I shine light, one of the electrons here will absorb energy corresponding to delta E, and mm -hmm. I will go up. So you can see this electron here. I will transit, and bloop, he comes here, okay? So because I'm able to undergo DD transitioning, right, and again, the energy that I absorb, right, complement, complementary to that color that I absorb will be the color blue that I see, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if you take a look at 3D10, now 10 is an even number, so obviously everything is paired, okay? I hope my EMF didn't fail me, all right? So everything is paired like this. So, Mr. Long, you can see I'm still split, right? Mm -hmm. But I cannot transit, can mm -hmm. I? Uh, you can't, right? Because there's no more space for you to do that. <laughs> exactly, but everything is filled up. Mm -hmm. So, my poor little electron here, I cannot transit. And mm. if I cannot absorb energy, will I see a colour? Uh, I don't think so. Exactly, right? And therefore, if I cannot absorb, colourless. So, uh, in general, 3D10, which is uh, copper plus, it is going to be uh, DD, DD transitioning is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Can DD splitting still happen? Uh, of course, right? Because mm -hmm. again, DD splitting has nothing to do whether you're coloured or you're non-coloured, right? Mm -hmm. As long you're an octahedral complex, you can undergo octahedral DD orbital splitting. Uh, as long as there's ligands, right? Yes. Uh, when it's coming in, there's repulsion, there's always going to be splitting instead. For sure, for sure. Bye!